You're on your way home from work, and the unthinkable happens. A nuclear detonation occurs in Eastern Europe. And then you get the notification saying, imminent nuclear strike here in the United States. And you're passing by the grocery store on your way home, and you think, maybe I can get one last trip in before SHTF actually happens. Well, in that scenario, what are you going to grab? What preps are you going to try to get? And here's the thing, as a prepper, you shouldn't need things like water, food, ammo, or band-aids because we should have those things squared away. So luckily, I put together a list of 20 different prepping items that I think I would try to grab in that exact scenario that most people won't actually be looking for in that immediate situation. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper. and We're talking about the last preps you would grab at the store if you got one more trip before an SHTF scenario. We've all thought about that exact situation happening, but how many of you have actually planned on what you would grab during that time? And understand, as preppers, we should have things like food, water, band-aids, and ammo figured out before that type of situation occurs. So you can focus on the things that other people won't be looking for during that panic, which might make it easier for you to get in and out, and it also might help you more along the way as you'll have more of the supplies you need to endure an SHTF scenario. And if you're worried about an SHTF event and you're worried about what you'll do in that last minute trip to the grocery store, then hit the subscribe button below because we're all thinking it and this is exactly what I'm trying to give you, the information you can see presented right here. So, just so you're aware, if you've never been to the channel before, thank you for being here. If you wanna look for other ways to support the channel, I'll put some links down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And the first thing on this list is going to be medicine. Now this one is something people might actually be fighting over, so keep that in mind. But if you have health conditions that require medicine of any kind, it's pretty important for you to have plenty of that, right? So I would definitely focus on medicine if you can, especially if you absolutely need it. Now this is just some aspirin. No wait, this is children's cold medicine. This is aspirin. Either way, these are just basic things that'll help you get through a long-term SHTF event, and these supplies will dry up very quickly. So medicine would be the first thing on the list because you really can't ever have enough of a supply of medicine. Now the second thing on the list is going to be toiletries. Now, toiletries include things like shampoo and conditioner, and of course, you can get things like toothpaste or toothbrushes or anything else related to what you need to use in the bathroom. And the reason behind that is because this stuff disappears very quickly, and especially in an SHTF scenario where maintaining hygiene will be very important in order to stay healthy, well, you're gonna run out of these supplies at some point, and people won't be thinking about shampoo and conditioner or toothpaste and things like that during that panic last minute run to the store. They'll be thinking about, how do I make a meatloaf during the apocalypse? So having this stuff on hand will be good, and it won't be likely being fought over. So things to keep in mind. Now, the next thing on this list is going to be Laundry detergent. Now, you can approach laundry detergent in many different ways. You can get the powdered form, which might last a little bit longer, but if you're in a last minute panic trip to the store, maybe just grab whatever you can. And one thing that's nice about having additional laundry detergent on hand is of course you can keep your clothes up and running for longer, keep your house smelling a little better when everybody's been wearing the same thing for the last six months. And even if an EMP goes down or you don't have access to your washing machine or anything like that anymore, you can still use the detergent to keep things clean by doing it manually. So there's a lot of different ways you can approach laundry detergent, but if you don't remember, during the height of the pandemic in 2020, this stuff disappeared, and a lot of people couldn't even get laundry detergent at that time. And it didn't happen right away, because of course people were worried about toilet paper, and they were worried about food, right? Well, get it while you can, because eventually everyone will say, wait a second, I need more laundry detergent. And that could be a, a big problem for you in that situation, all right? Now moving on from there, in the same vein is going to be bleach. Now bleach obviously has a lot of applications and there's a lot of different approaches you can take when it comes to bleach as well for long-term storage. But like I said, with the laundry detergent, just grab what you can if that's what we're talking about here, right? But bleach is great because not only can you clean things with it, but you can also treat water with it and it has a lot of survival applications. So I would have bleach and grab some if you can on that last minute trip. Now, moving on from there, dish soap. Now a lot of people, don't really think about dish soap too often when it comes to prepping, but being able to wash your plateware and your silverware and everything else you use in the sense of cookware is a good idea to be able to do, but you can also use dish soap to wash just about anything else as well. We all know that people use it for oil spills to clean animals. And you can also use things like dish soap to find a leak in a hose and things like that. So it has a lot of applications and I would probably grab more of that if I could. And I don't think people will be fighting over dish soap. They'll be fighting over cans of cream of mushroom soup. So. Moving on from there, the next thing on the list is going to be one of the most important things on this list in all honesty, and sorry to say it, but salt. You need more salt. 
I need more salt. I don't even have enough salt on hand right now, and I have a lot of salt. But you can never have enough salt. And in fact, you might just be salt rich at some point in the apocalypse if you have enough of it. So you need salt for your body. Your body needs sodium to survive. Iodized salt might actually help you a little bit in the sense of a nuclear environment. And you're going to need it to make your food taste good. You're going to need it to replenish your body. You're going to need it for like a million other things in the sense of what salt can do. I don't know, food preservation. It has a lot of purposes. So you'll need more salt. I would grab more salt. And I don't think you'll find people fighting over salt the same way you will over bacon bits. So moving on from there, what's next on the list? And of course, with salt, you can always add in seasonings as well. If you're in that aisle anyway, just grab some extra stuff to make things taste good, right? So next on the list is going to be bags. You're just gonna need a lot of bags. You can never have enough bags. Grab trash bags, these are nice big contractor bags, which are great for just whatever you need them for. I mean, grab some Ziploc bags, grab whatever bags you want, but just grab as many bags as you can. Grab a stack of those plastic bags at the cash register for all I care, but just make sure you have a lot of bags because this will help with cleanup, this will help with keeping things organized and tidy, this will help with any waste that you're going to produce, and especially if you need to keep it hidden. There's a lot of applications that bags have. Makeshift shelters, sealing up windows and doors. I mean, you really can't say enough about having some bags around. So get a bunch of bags. People aren't going to be fighting over garbage bags, and you'll be the one who comes out as a garbage bag king. So after bags, let's talk about light bulbs. This is something I don't think about enough, and I don't think a lot of people think about light bulbs enough. Like they, a light bulb burns out, and they go to the store and they buy a light bulb, right? I think you should have a ton of light bulbs on hand because if the power is still up, it'd be nice to be able to keep the lights on no matter what, even if they're LED and they say the last 10 years, 25 years, 30 years, however long they used to say before they figured out that it was a bad idea to sell us light bulbs that lasted forever. Well, they'll burn out eventually or just stop working and you'll want to keep the lights going. So having additional light bulbs on hand is a good idea. And my grocery store sells light bulbs and I assume most grocery stores do. So I would grab some light bulbs and honestly, even if the grid goes down, but you can create your own power, being able to power some of those light bulbs within your house would probably be a good idea. So that's something I would grab because I don't think anybody else is gonna think about it in that immediate situation, all right? Another thing you should grab that a lot of people might be fighting over, but it just depends on what they're used to, okay? Batteries. Now, a lot of people fight over batteries in places like Florida because in hurricane season, they know every year that when people get flashlights, they also get batteries, right? So everyone fights over the batteries and they want the batteries. But where I live in North Dakota, batteries might not be top of mind when it comes to grabbing survival equipment in the sense of food and meatloaf and cheesecake and whatever else it is they're going to grab. So make sure you can grab batteries if you see them. If you're like run out the door and like there's a bunch of batteries right there on a rack, just grab some batteries. Now, I would try my best to maybe grab more relevant batteries because these C batteries, I mean, they're really only good for some of my kids' toys. But then again, yeah, you know, if you have some batteries, you have some batteries, right? So I would try to grab maybe the double A's, the triple A's, some of those CR2032s or whatever else you need. But hey, batteries, always a good thing to have. I would avoid them if people are fighting over them. And like I said, depending on your location, that might be the case. Now, before I move on, I do need to mention that the channel's biggest supporter is Midway USA. Midway USA, Huge thank you to them for helping me do what I do here in the sense of spreading preparedness awareness, because that's basically what it is I'm trying to do. And of course, they have things like batteries and all kinds of survival stuff, so make sure you check them out and just thank them for supporting what I do, okay? Moving on from there, here's a great one. Feminine products, okay? I don't care if you're a dude and you're on your way home. If you got a family, you got a wife, you got daughters, whatever you got, grab some feminine hygiene products, man, because they're gonna need them, especially if it's a long-term apocalyptic event. This stuff is going to eventually run out because most of the time it's disposable. Yes, can you get reusable feminine hygiene products? Of course you can. But I would say just grab them anyway because it's just going to be a good thing to have, right? And of course, I don't have any issues grabbing this stuff for my wife because I just don't care and don't have some kind of weird pride that prevents me from doing that. But if that's you, at least on this last trip to the store before a nuclear apocalypse, Suck it up and grab some pads, bro. It's not a big deal, I, I, I guarantee you, okay? But those are things that people are gonna want during an apocalyptic event, and they're gonna disappear very quickly, and the women in your life are gonna appreciate having access to more of them, okay? That's just my opinion. Anyway, moving on from there, how about oil? Oil of any kind, but preferably olive oil or coconut oil, right? Because they have better health properties, they, they store well, they... Uh, coconut oil especially, but even then, olive oil and coconut oil, they're better for you all that kind of stuff. But you know what? If they don't have any, or you're not trying to like spend time looking for it, but you find a giant jug of vegetable oil, 
Grab some oil, because you're gonna want oil for a lot of reasons. You can use it for cooking, obviously. You can use it to increase your caloric intake with the food that you are cooking. And you can do a lot of other stuff with oil too. So just grab some oil and get the better stuff if you can, but grab what you can. We're talking about like running through a store with a grocery cart. Like it's one of those weird contests where if you can fill the cart, everything in it, you get to keep. Well, that's what you should kind of approach the situation in. So let's not spend 10 minutes in the aisle trying to find the best coconut oil that exists. And let's just grab some oil, all right? I'm just throwing it out there. Now, what else is good to have that other people aren't gonna be thinking of in that exact immediate situation, right? I would say multi-purpose cleaners, okay? Get like, just grab a few all-purpose cleaners, whatever they are, Lysol, Windex, whatever you want, right? But all-purpose cleaners are a great thing to have because they're all-purpose. Clean whatever you want with them. But keeping things clean is going to be a big deal and keeping things clean is going to be hard to do. So having additional cleaning supplies is going to be helpful. And these multi-purpose cleaners, I mean, you're gonna run out of them eventually. So just throw some in the cart, call it a day, and move on to the next item on the list, which is going to be a really useful item. And this is something you should have some of already, but you can never have enough, which is vinegar, okay? So vinegar, what do I like about vinegar? Well, here's the thing. Vinegar can do a lot of things. It can be a cleaner, right? So bleach, multi-purpose cleaners, great. Vinegar, it can clean too. Guess what else vinegar can do? It can preserve food. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. What else is it used for? I don't know, I can use it to make things like cheese. There's a million things you can do with vinegar. I think having extra vinegar is gonna be huge. I think it's a great thing to have because of how many different functions it has in the sense of being able to be a cleaner while also being edible, right? There's a lot of things that vinegar brings to the table that can't really be matched by a lot of the other things that's here on the table, which I just said table too many times, but here we are. So. Vinegar, I would grab a ton of vinegar if you can. It's just very useful, has a lot of application, and I don't think people are gonna fight over jugs of vinegar. They're just not even gonna think about vinegar. Why would they be, what are we having, salad every day during the apocalypse, right? They're just not gonna think about it. So moving on from there, I hate this, I really do, but can openers, right? They're just awful, they break all the time, they're not very efficient. You can get the military style ones and everything else, of course, but they don't have those at the grocery store. But if I was running through the aisle that has the can openers and all like the cookware and stuff, I'd just like throw every can opener in the cart that I could. Because you know what? You're gonna open a lot of cans in the apocalypse, at least if you have a well-stocked pantry, and having additional can openers won't hurt you. And then uh, just grab some extra cookware while you're there too, right? It doesn't hurt to have additional spatulas or spoons or anything else, right? So just grab what you need, but definitely get some can openers. Next on the list, all right, we are gonna talk about baking soda. Why do I like baking soda? Because it is also multi-purpose. It's used in baking, of course, which might be very handy if you have things like flour stored away. And what's great about baking soda is you can use it as a way to brush your teeth or clean things. It's got so many different options. So grab some baking soda. It also helps with odor, which might be an issue during the apocalypse. I'm just throwing that out there. Baking soda, grab some, you won't be upset. Moving on from baking soda, we're gonna talk about vitamins, okay? This is another thing similar to medicine, but people will be thinking about medicine before they're gonna think about vitamins. But vitamins can really help you keep malnutrition away during a survival situation. So could you imagine just having all the multivitamins that are in a grocery store and have them last you the next year or two without having to worry about if you're gonna get enough zinc in your diet or anything like that? Awesome, get some vitamins. Yeah, are these as good as all the natural alternatives and stuff? No, of course not. We're talking about survival here, people. I'm not caring about that stuff as much as having some multivitamin, whatever it is, thrown into my body and hoping for the best. I mean, we're trying to survive a nuclear apocalypse here, not you know worry about holistic medicine. I'm just throwing that out there, okay? Nothing wrong with holistic medicine. Don't misinterpret that at all, because I know some of you will. Moving on from there, candles, okay? Look, grocery stores around me, or maybe like, I'm pretty sure this one's from Tractor Supply. Let's be honest, I go there too much. Either way, candles are good, right? They keep things lit in the sense of having alternative lighting solutions when there's no power. They also can help you, eh, like maintain a tiny bit of warmth. I don't rely on candles for that. I don't necessarily think anyone should, but sure, you can use them for that application. But there's just a lot of things that candles bring to the table, and this one's even scented, which could be nice depending on the situation. Whether or not you wanna keep a low footprint or if you don't care about OPSEC at that point, either way, Candles are just a good emergency item to have for a lot of different reasons. And of course at grocery stores, you don't usually find as many of the emergency style candles as you do like scented candles, but screw it. Get some scented candles, throw them in the cart, call it a day. Just having additional candles won't be a bad thing. And nobody's gonna be fighting over candles in that moment. So you can just nicely take your time through that aisle. All right, now moving on from there. One of my favorite preps, cause I am, well, in many ways a caffeine addict, but instant coffee. 
Why would I want more instant coffee? Because I need coffee all the time, every single day, every hour of my life, even when I'm asleep. It's weird how I do it. Don't worry about why I have all this information based around how to use an IV. But what I'm trying to say is that instant coffee would be a good thing to have. People are going to be grabbing other types of coffee they're used to having before they're gonna think about the instant coffee, and you know this will last forever. And all you have to do is add hot water to it rather than trying to brew it or use a French press or do any of that other stuff, right? So I would grab a bunch of instant coffee because like I want it during the apocalypse. I don't know about you. Maybe I'll wean myself off during that time. But in the immediate apocalypse, I really would like a cup of coffee. So instant coffee, great thing to grab in the last minute trip to the store. Moving on from there, I would get some baby wipes, even if you don't have a baby. You know why? Because you can take a baby wipe bath, man, you'll feel way better than you would if you don't take a baby wipe bath, especially if everything goes down, you don't have running water, there is no more shower, maybe there is running water, but there's no heat, so the water's way too cold. Whatever it is, man, I have had my share of baby wipe baths in my life, and if you haven't, well, you don't know what you're missing out on. But these things can be a game changer in the sense of keeping yourself clean, during the apocalypse, and I would grab some more baby wipes, just because, why not? And another thing I would grab, and this is number 20 on the list, so we made it through this whole list, but this is probably one of the most important I would grab that no one else is gonna be thinking about. No one's gonna be thinking about this during this like, oh, it's all happening, we're at the grocery store freaking out. And by the way, I don't necessarily suggest doing that. I hope you understand, like that's not necessarily a great strategy, but if you're gonna do it, Maybe think about the things you would grab beforehand so you can be a little bit more efficient about it, right? And one of the best things I would grab in that scenario is honey. Do you think people are gonna be in the honey aisle fighting over that last little jar of honey? I really doubt it. I think that honey is gonna be relatively untouched at first. And man, does honey have a lot of great properties. Not to mention the fact that it lasts forever, but it has all the other amazing healing properties that honey brings to the table. So I would grab as much honey off that shelf as I could possibly grab because it's not gonna hurt anything and you'll be honey rich, feeling really good about it. Guarantee you that. Now, like I said, this is not a suggestible strategy, okay? But it's an understandable thing. If you're on your way home, you're not home already, and there's a store on your way, and you know you can get in and get out before a nuclear event. Somehow you know that. Don't ask me how. Maybe you just do. Either way, you understand how long it takes ICBMs to travel across the Pacific Ocean. I don't know. Or across the Arctic, I guess. Either way, these are the things I would grab in that moment if you're going to stop. Because having more supplies would be beneficial no matter what anyone says. Although I still don't suggest doing this if you don't have to. That's my two cents. But if you're going to do it, have a plan. And of course, there's some things on this list that are not on this list that could have easily been on this list. Like, I don't know, yeast, right? If you want to bake things that actually have some levity to them, well, you're going to need yeast. And yeast only really lasts like up to two years if you freeze it. So those are things you could grab. You could also grab things like uh, paper plates, for example, and disposable silverware. Things that will make cleanup a little bit easier and make life a little more simple. Those are things too. So if you have additional suggestions, Leave them in the comments below because I can't go over, over every single item that you could possibly want during this situation, but you all can help us get some more ideas down in the comments to kind of, I don't know, bring something else to the table that maybe none of us are thinking about, which is much appreciated because I don't know every single thing. I really just don't. I try my best to understand as much as I can, but I am not an expert in the sense of what to get at the grocery store during the apocalyptic event that ends the world. I'm just doing the best I can to give you some things to think about. And then you guys are really good about giving me things to think about down in the comments, which I greatly appreciate. If you have anything else for me, magicprepper.com is a great place to go. And besides that, it's going to be it for Magic Prepper.